But when John the Baptist cried, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, I had no idea from what the people had to repent. In my church culture, I knew what it meant to repent. Stop smoking, stop drinking, stop playing cards, stop dancing, stop going to movies, stop wearing tight jeans, cut your hair, and don't hold hands before you're married. But in the Jewish culture of the first century, I hadn't the foggiest notion. What did John's words mean to them, to the people to whom he was sent? What did repent mean to them? The last instructions of Jesus to his disciples were, go into all the nations of the world, starting in Jerusalem, and make disciples. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Teach them everything I taught you. When I was 17, after a lifetime of immersing myself in the Bible-believing church culture in America, I suddenly realized that I did not understand what Jesus taught. I knew stories about Jesus and just about every other character in the Bible, but I could not in any intelligible fashion articulate the message he and his disciples were preaching to the multitude throughout the Galilee. I simply did not understand what Jesus told his disciples to teach their disciples. I was, however, a good disciple of my denomination. I was lightning fast when it came to finding a Bible verse and a quick draw sword drill. I was the quickest off the electronic pad when I rose to answer an obscure Bible question during quiz team competitions. I knew every stanza of just as I am. But when John the Baptist cried, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, I had no idea from what the people had to repent. In my church culture, I knew what it meant to repent. Stop smoking, stop drinking, stop playing cards, stop dancing, stop going to movies, stop wearing tight jeans, cut your hair, and don't hold hands before you're married. But in the Jewish culture of the first century, I hadn't the foggiest notion. What did John's words mean to them, to the people to whom he was sent? What did repent mean to them? Even though we have the majority of the gospel records coming directly to us through the Greek language, the gospels do not portray a Greek culture. It was a Jewish culture that was rooted in their current cultural interpretation of the Torah. Torah means the instructions, and specifically the instructions God delivered to the nation of Israel through Moses at Mount Sinai. Those instructions are contained in one scroll, the five books of Moses, Bereshit, Shemot, Barikra, Bamidbar, and Devarim, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The history of Israel is a roller coaster ride of the only nation on earth that goes from careful observance of the commandments in the Torah to total immersion in the abominations of pagan religions. The testimonies of these centuries of vacillations is recorded in the historical writings that follow the Torah in the English Bible. The books of Joshua, Judges, Ruth, the four books of the kings, and the chronicles of the kings of Israel that take us up to the time of the Babylonian captivity. The books of the prophets detail Israel's infractions against the Torah and warnings of the repercussions. They speak of the destruction of the nation and their future regathering from among the nations. Both Isaiah's and Jeremiah's message could be summed up in one word, teshuvah, repent, return. The same message of John the Baptist. The books of the prophets warn of and the historical writings conclude with the carrying away of the population of the entire nation of Israel. Both the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. Because of the rejection of the Torah in their blatant, unbridled descent into pagan worship, the 10 northern tribes of Israel were removed from the Promised Land and dispersed throughout the Assyrian Empire. A few of the faithful made their way down to Judea, 
but the rest are known today in Judaism as the Lost Ten Tribes. All those living in Judea who became referred to as Judeans and later as Jews were ejected from the Promised Land because of our disobedience to God's instructions concerning the agricultural land Sabbath that was to occur one year in seven. Moses prophesied that we would be forcibly removed from the land and the land would have its rest if we did not let the land rest while we were in it. For the 490 years preceding the Babylonian captivity, we disobeyed God and refused to let the land rest. We owed him 70 years and we spent it in Babylon. The book of Daniel chronicles the years that we spent in Babylon and includes the divine revelation of when Israel's Messiah would come. 69 sevens or 483 years after the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. The books of Nehemiah and Ezra tell of our repatriation into the promised land and Ezra records the exact date that we left Babylon under Artaxerxes' command the first day of the first month in the seventh year of the reign of Artaxerxes, 457 BCE, 483 years before John the Baptist heralded Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, the first day of the first month, 27 of the Common Era. The book of Esther records what happened to the Jews who stayed behind in Babylon a prophetic shadow of those who do not return when the doors open. The books oft referred to as the minor prophets are not minor at all. Beside calling for a return to the Torah, they give us specific information of where the Messiah would be born, that he would be wounded by the occupying army, and that he would relinquish his authority to rule over Israel until a future time when Israel is brought back from their 2,000 year exile. The Torah, the five books of Moses, the Nevi'im, the prophets, and the Ketuvim, the writings, the historical records, are referred to collectively by the Hebrew acronym Tanakh. Jesus spoke of the things written of him in the Torah, the prophets, and the writings, the Tanakh. If we are going to understand what the gospel of the kingdom meant to the Jews in the days of Jesus, we are going to have to look at the scriptures from their perspective. What did those words and teachings mean to those who lived in that culture? to those who were raised with both the instructions of the Almighty and raised with the diverse religious systems that dominated first century Israel. We need to get an understanding of the religious environment of Israel in the time of Jesus in order to comprehend the gospel of the kingdom and how it applies directly to us today. Shalom Torah fans. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Tap the subscription button and the bell icon, and I promise to update weekly with in-depth biblical research. Be sure to download the new michaelrood.tv app for both mobile and home devices for even more commercial-free content.